Hey guys, well after a vacation, an anniversary celebration, and a convention or two, I'm here at my bench getting ready to build my next project. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to another Indochina Modeler. So my next project was going to be the USS Kelvin, and I say was because I'm actually going to postpone this for a little bit. Uh, I found out that Green Strawberry, which is a company that makes uh, photo etch parts, is coming out with some parts for this model kit, which I think will benefit the lighting of this model. So I have the lights, I have the painting mask from Aztec Dummy all set to go, but I'm going to hold off on this. I think it's going to take at least another month before those parts come out. So I'm going to set this aside. And so I was looking through my stash here in the garage, and and I came up with this model here. And this is something that I found at a Star Trek convention, actually, about five years ago or so. And uh, this, of course, is from the Buck Rogers universe. This is from the 1970s series. And uh, this is the Marauder, uh, which was seen in the pilot episode of the show. And I just thought it would be fun to uh, give this kit a try. So let's go ahead and open up and see what's in this vintage kit. So as you can see, it's still in the shrink wrap. And I was able to get this model for $35. Uh, I know it goes for a bit more now, and uh, for those of you who collect kits, you probably think, you know, why would you want to open this, but I'm going to go ahead and open it up because uh, I intend to build all the models I have in my garage, <laughs> eventually. So let's uh, take a look, take the shrink wrap away. All right, let me start off with the instructions again. I'm just going to show you what comes with the kit here uh, before I go into what I have planned for it. Uh, we've got uh, pretty simple instructions that include 12 steps that you can assemble the model in. So really not a lot of parts uh, to this model kit. And we've got the top section. And we've got the... Uh, main exhaust here, there's a stand, and we have a pilot seat. This is the only thing that is um, included in the kit for the cockpit. There's no instrument panel at all. And we've got the bottom section, which has some nice deep panel lines there. The uh, left and right hand side of the cockpit. And then we have these attachments, which uh, house the laser turrets here at the front. And we've got some paneling that goes on each side of the ship there on top of the wing. A uh, small decal sheet. They still look like they're in good condition. I'm still going to scan these, though, just in case these happen to fall apart on us as we're putting together the model. Um, the uh, cockpit window, I decided just to put in a small bag here so I wouldn't lose it or scratch it. And you see it comes already in a clear red color. All right, let me go over my plans now for the model kit. I'm not going to build it straight from the box because there are some details that are missing uh, that I'd like to recreate. So let me start with these pictures here. These are from modelermagic.com. If you've not been to this website, I encourage you to visit it. Uh, this apparently is a very faithful recreation of the studio model, so I'm going to use this as my guide. So let me first draw your attention to the cockpit. So I'm going to talk about the surface modifications first. Uh, so what we have here is a different configuration shown here than on our model kit. And I found out that there are actually two different configurations. We've got this one here, which has a partial window, I'm going to call it. You can see our window is divided kind of in half here, where the bottom section is paneled over, versus what we see here on our model kit with a full window. And I just kind of like the appearance of the other one, so that's what I'm going to try to recreate that. And uh, so we have half the window again that's paneled over here. We've got some trim along the sides. And then this triangular section up above here has to be opened up. Now if we go over to the wings, we have some detailing here, these strips that are absent in our model kit. Let me show you the top section of the model again here. You can see it's pretty smooth. And uh, so I'm going to try to recreate those. And then the other detailing that's going to be a little more difficult or more challenging are these wings that you see here on the laser turrets. So these again are the attachments on the edge of the wing. And our model comes with only four of these wings here. Let me show you a close-up. And so I'm going to try to use styrene plastic to recreate the ones that are missing. Now, if it doesn't work out and I'm having too much difficulty with it, I'm just going to forego that step, but I'm going to give it at least a shot. So to recreate the detailing here along the cockpit and the wings, I'm going to be using some strip styrene from Evergreen Scale Models. Uh, we've got some half round strips here, which we'll be using for the trim around the window. And then we have these strips here, which I'll be using to recreate some of those detailings there on the wings. Now, as for lighting, uh, I'm going to go ahead and light up the engine. I'm going to show you a screenshot now from the pilot episode. And you can see that the main engine is lit here, so we can recreate that using a yellow LED. 
And then this other shot shows a uh, front view um, of the ship coming right at us here. You can see that the uh, cockpits are glowing red. So I'm going to add a red LED into the cockpit. And I think I'll frost over the window. As, you, as I showed you there, the window comes already tinted in red. But uh, I think I'll frost it over so that you won't see the LED shining through. So as for our base color, I'm going to be mixing uh, these two colors from Mission Models, just orange and brown. Hopefully it will give us the look that I'm after here. Um, and then we're going to be adding a wash and some other weathering. Before we do anything with painting or prepping for painting, let's go ahead and add some of the detailing. The easiest would be to add detailing here and here. Then we refer you back to the reference pictures. Um, these strips here are going to be added by using these here from Evergreen Scale Models. You see the size right here. And I'm just going to take some plastic cement and add our strips as we go along here and then trim them with an X-Acto knife. I think the detailing is coming out pretty well. I was able to create the triangular pieces also by using a wider piece of the uh, strip styrene. And then the crossbar was just created using these thin strips that we have here. Now, before we move forward, I wanted to show you, uh, I, I put these uh, pieces in place here temporarily. Uh, there is other detailing that is present here, here, and here. Let me show you the reference picture. You can see there's a little detailing here. But it, this area is so small with this model kit, I don't think there's anything I can put in there that would look good. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. Let me go ahead and show you the detailing now I have planned for the bottom section here. So you can see it's pretty plain. And again, let me pull out this picture. Um, you can see that it actually has uh, a bit of detailing here as well. So it's a matter of just creating some layers using styrene plastic. Uh, I'm not sure how easy that's going to be, but uh, my plan is to... Uh, Take this here, you see I've taped it. I'm going to lift this off and use this as a template to cut some of the uh, styrene that I'm going to need for the detailing. Uh, the other thing I'm going to try and create is the detailing here. So I'm just going to use, uh, again, some, some other pieces of styrene to try and come up with something there. Well, this wasn't the easiest thing to do, but I think I have the pieces now that I need. So as you saw, I started off with this as a template, and then I cut about two centimeters off of that, and then used this one as a template to make the second piece that will fit into here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these into position, and then I'm going to work on the detailing in these areas here. Well, guess what? I ended up going back and taking these uh, modifications off and replacing them with what you see here. Um, the reason I did that was because I got these pictures from modeler James Smith. Uh, he had a ton of pictures of the studio model as well as this model here uh, that was put together by another modeler. And you can see uh, the way his plates were arranged here. I actually compared them to the studio model and they looked a lot better than mine. So I went ahead and cut some new ones and I think I got pretty close here. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and work on more of the detailing here. And um, I'm going to follow this person's lead by adding more of these details as well.
All right, well, our goal was to try to make the model look like the picture you see on the left here, and I think I got pretty close. Uh, really, what this just comes down to is scratch building, uh, just taking strips of styrene, rods of styrene, and sheets of styrene, and trimming them, cutting them to create the pieces, because I did try to look in my parts drawer, and I really didn't have anything that looked like any of these sorts of things, so uh, it really came down to that. Uh, very happy with the way things are looking so far. Um, one thing that was very helpful this time was to have that Tamiya drill to create the holes that you see here. The model comes with these little nubs that uh, instead of the holes there, so I just simply uh, used my X-Acto knife to trim those off and then sanded it, used the drill, which uh, was very helpful again to create those holes. Um, so something like that I think would be helpful for you to have in your tools drawer whether you use that or a different instrument that doesn't rotate very quickly because it made it very simple. Not only to create that but to create some of these other pieces uh, for example I didn't have anything that looked like uh, the pieces that you see here on each side so as you saw I just took that drill and made a series of holes and then trimmed some styrene to fit into that. So I've got some other uh, detailing to do here in this section and uh, then I'm going to create these little wings here for that and then I think we'll be done with the bottom half of the model. Now once uh, the model is getting prepped for painting I think what I'm going to do is prime the entire thing uh, white. Um, I, I think that might be helpful because the, the styrene here is white so uh, I, I think that's what I'll do there. And um, then the next step now is to return to the top portion of the model. Um, I'm going to work on some of the detailing here to create some of these wings and then we've got the cockpit to work on. So I'll return here in just a second uh, to show you my progress here. I'm going to take a break for this uh, right now uh, because it took most of the afternoon to complete that. So I'll give my shoulders and neck a break here and I'll be right back. And here are the final pieces now. So with these I had some sheet styrene that came striated already so I just cut some strips there. Um, I didn't have anything that looked like this you can see these strips here had these indentations, so I just um, used some strip styrene and cut some rods to uh, glue into place to create that pattern. Well, it's sure been fun scratch building all of this. That's one of my favorite things to do. I'm actually going to set this aside for now, however, and end this part of the video. I'll pick up then in part two. What I have left is probably the more challenging part of this build. At least that's what I've been told by a couple of the modelers who've attempted this. And that is then to create these uh, fins that we have on the tail ends of each of those turrets. Not sure if I'm looking forward to that, but I'll certainly give it my best shot. If it doesn't work, I'll just forego that, but I really want to give that a try. Also have the assembly of the cockpit and the lighting left, so uh, we'll see how that all goes. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here by leaving a comment or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, you guys.